Uh, by the way, just a quick correction. Uh, I was a past chairman of BITSA International. I'm no longer the chairman of BITSA International, but never mind. Uh, so we, I've got uh, you know two of the brightest minds, uh, some of the uh, in their line of work, and uh, you know Kanwal needs no introduction. Uh, you know, yeah, often in Silicon Valley we uh, think of him like the uh, Bhishma Pitama, right? of Thai, and uh, you know, if you're seeing this vibrant uh, organization today and this uh, conference uh, here in Hyderabad, uh, Kanwal, as you very well know, has been one of the most passionate advocates for entrepreneurship uh, and not just founding Thai. And uh, Dr. Chintala has uh, built a, an organization, uh, NABARD, which uh, most of you would have heard about, one of the most admired uh, government organizations in India. And uh, of course, we'll talk a little bit more about you know, some of his work and his perspective on the topic of our conversation. Uh, just to set a context for this, uh, the premise here is that the entrepreneur ecosystem in India is now very vibrant. And you know, a lot of that, however, is confined to the metro India, right? Uh, they're truly world-class companies and absolutely you know, uh, startup founders that are comparable to the best that you find anywhere, Silicon Valley or otherwise. Uh, so I think one could say that train has left the station already. Uh, but the question is, with 70% of India living in rural areas, you know, unless we can nurture more entrepreneurs in rural areas, but also bring a lot of these startups and innovation to address the problems and opportunities of rural India, can we actually become an economic superpower someday? So, you know, that's kind of the premise of this conversation. So with that, uh, why don't I begin with a question for uh, Kanwal. Kanwal, you are now at the tail end of your, uh, what, 10 or 12 day visit to India. Uh, he was in Mumbai and uh, Bangalore, Delhi, and of course in Hyderabad, and every place he's visited a Thai organization, he spent time with them, and also, in a, a small town, a tier three town, thinks the, since the, con the context here is all about rural India, a town called Nizamabad, about three hours north of here. Uh, and uh, it's probably the smallest city anywhere in the world with a Thai chapter and very vibrant Thai chapter. So Kanwal addressed that group also. So, <coughs> you've, seen, so you've seen uh, quite a bit just uh, over the last 10, 12 days. And uh, I know at times you got emotional uh, thinking about what you're seeing in India. Uh, can you just uh, share your thoughts on that? So you can feel the energy you know, in India. You, know, you can feel things are happening finally. Yeah, there's this sense of optimism. And, uh, but I worry, I worry. You know, when we started out, our planning commission, our planning process left the villages behind. You know, it focused on steel mills, it focused on industries, and it left the villages behind. And I'm worried, unless we make it a mission, we will leave the, you know, we will leave the villages behind again. And that must not be allowed to happen. This time, uh, when our time has come and we are moving forward, we must include everybody. India is not going to mechanize and collectivize like China did or Russia did, or others do. We have our own you know, villages, we have our own style. We need to make sure our entrepreneurs bring you know, innovations and technology to the villages, help them upgrade, improve whatever that needs to be done, double, quadruple their incomes, you know, without really disrupting the village style. And, and you know, my hope is that our entrepreneurs will be allowed, you know, will be funded to make that happen. And, and we need to also make sure we have the entrepreneurship happening in the second, third, fourth year cities closer to the villages. So, you know, stuff is happening, but we need to be doubly careful this time that we do not leave Bharat behind. Wonderful. Very, very well said, Kanwal. So, uh, Dr. Chintala, you've uh, built, you know, uh, absolutely the best known organization addressing some of the rural livelihoods and agriculture. 
and uh, j- just to give you some context uh, dr chintala st- joined this uh, joined nabard uh, straight out of college and uh, grew you know through the ranks to become the chairman of that organization and just retired a couple months ago so i can't think of anyone else who's got a more you know uh, in depth uh, sort of insight of uh, the rural communities and the challenges and the opportunities any comments on that yeah <clears throat> thanks a lot first of all it's a great opportunity for me to put the rural context into this kind of a great investing world because generally that earlier people thought that rural areas uh, interventions or innovations are in niche areas very few people should come into it but actually it's not so having uh, headed the organization uh, as chairman of 100 billion dollar bank it's a in the world actually there is only one developmental financial institution for agriculture which has reached a level of 100 billion dollars and remained profitable forever in the last 40 years and we know really how the bharat is galloping to reach the india actually as kanwal ji was telling we should not leave the bharat behind why i am telling is because having seen uh, bharat from the close quarters for the past 37 years as an officer to the chairman i could say that out of 1400 million people i think close to around 900 million stays in the villages and 54% of the people draw their sustenance and the livelihoods from the agriculture and you can imagine really how this country is going to be there and also you see any of the other reports india is going to be predominantly like this and at least 50% of the population will be there in the villages so now the time has come to see really how the villages are uh, getting rejuvenated and also the entrepreneurship in the villages are going to be uh, entrepreneurs are going to be empowered actually i have seen uh, because the enthusiasm which kanwal ji was expressing i could feel it uh, in the last few may years like uh, if i just take a little bit of a statistics at the time of independence as uh, kanwal ji was privately uh, telling us that time it was a, a era of despair era of absolutely no point of no return kind of a thing but actually it's not so right now in 1940s 750 actually we were producing hardly 50 million tons of food grains today food grains itself is around 315 million tons and at one point of a time we were not producing many fruits and vegetables today fruits and vegetables are 340 million tons and in sugar earlier actually we used to stand in the queues but today actually we are number one many times out beating brazil in cotton we are next to united states and maybe in many other products actually we are number one tea coffee and all those things now if i really look into it we have the finite land area we have the finite kind of a thing which we just can't ex- uh, expand but the kind of an innovation that is going continuously into this kind of a thing actually the productivity has gone up production has gone up and now the many of the things are there but now what is the crux of the whole of the present climate still actually that the indian production has gone up but the productivity levels are still low <coughs> and at the same time our products to reach international markets we have a lot of setbacks so now the time has come for this investing world to look into the opportunities as to how a startups can bring that the final thing that uh, in helicopter if you say there is a thing called a jesus bolt actually that is the final bolt actually in case if that gives up the helicopter will fall but the thing is now indian agriculture requires that kind of a jesus bolt and the jesus bolt is nothing but the startups actually now quite a lot of startups are there and a good enabling environment is also being created in the country with regard to the policies with regard to the institutions and with regard to the voluntary agencies uh, like maybe some foundations coming into this kind of thing and uh, really the bharat which is going to hold 50% of the people in the next 50 years to come we have to do something for this one uh, uh, so i am extremely upbeat the way i share the optimism of uh, kanwal ji that this uh, particular part of bharat is going to be the growth engine in the days to come Thank yeah you. yeah interesting you talked about the productivity uh, you know over 40% of india's workforce is in agriculture related uh, uh, you know segments and uh, producing less than 20% of the gdp just as a data point right yeah so uh, kanwal you've obviously uh, you know talked about nurturing uh, mass entrepreneurship i think that is a phrase you're using lately and uh, can you 
talk a little bit about that and i know there were times you were getting pretty emotional uh, in the car we were together driving around and you know uh, just uh, describing these things go ahead so so i was born in 1945 and came of age in 50s and i left for us in 1967 the indian india became democracy with the universal franchise you know, but somehow the elite chose to become socialist you know as a as a country democracy is about choices socialism is about elite telling everybody what to do we have found our, our way back uh, we have found our way back to markets and entrepreneurship markets and entrepreneurship are about choices democracy and markets are a matched pair you get to vote every day with your rupees so we are starting to see the impact we are starting to see the impact but this is a drop in the bucket and this is a drop in the bucket a country of 1.4 billion people has maybe 150000 entrepreneurs we should think of a million entrepreneurs in another 5 years we should think of 10 million entrepreneurs by 2047 our our independence day here yeah, tai ni su changes that line from fast in entrepreneurship to fast in mass entrepreneurship we need to put our faith in our young people we should get rid of those bureaucrats who are telling us what to do you know i issued that clarion call dot hatao desh bachao somebody needs to come you are telling us what to do you know i issued the clarion card dot hatao desh bachao somebody needs to come up in simple parts and things about you know what i got the start of india policy report and i got that you know those that they are jokers they have no idea how the pressure works they need to step aside let the people do it let the people do it what well, you need a certification from somebody to be term a startup who is part of to tell somebody you are a bona fide startup so, so you know the beauty of the tarifam policy was it was one pager tarifam policy was one pager it had no license sale 7% revenue share no exclusives everybody is welcome domestic or foreign you must start operation in multiple sectors right away within yeah there was something that like, yeah, you see to 6 months and we know what happened there your yeah, data policy somebody needs to simplify the policy on this front yeah like that if you're going to have a million entrepreneurs and 10 million entrepreneurs we need trillions of dollars of 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 vc investment is not going to come from domestic savings all the policy framework right now is focused on how do we build our own vc industry who cares how do we fund our entrepreneurs how do we fund our entrepreneurs how do we provide the venture capital somebody needs to tell these jokers you know step out of the way let the foreign money flow let you know, let's roll out the red carpet let's tell the whole world put your savings in india and in your entrepreneurs wow yeah for those of you uh, who uh, may not have known kanwal wrote this uh, blog uh, in economic times uh, you know titled uh, uh, dot hatao desh bachao which uh, led to the big change in the telecom policy that of course unleashed the yeah. you know mobile yeah, so i i want to say niti uh, yod hatao desh bachao okay <laughs> uh yeah so uh, i i know you were talking about kind of what is the song you were humming in the car uh, you know what is up during up, up, up the darkest not, days yeah. of india yeah. you know, when i was growing up you know, things were very hopeless the planning commission had messed up they had used massive amount of money and there was nothing to show, show for it and there were no jobs and there was a son you know can can we you know, he had this up ramunti badli me chamatta ek sitara hai aaj apna ho na ho par kal hamara 
We were singing that song in the late 50s. The video is being blocked. Yeah, well, you get the idea. Yeah. So, uh, for a lot of the youngsters here, uh, the modern version of that is what's that? Uh, the song from Gully Boy I was thinking about. Aayega apna time aayega. Right. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, we, we just uh, we're in the car together for the last three, four days, and you know, going through the agri fields around Nizamabad, and uh, you know, yesterday we were at IIT Hyderabad. So as you can tell, I was trying to soak up a lot of this wisdom, and you know, Kanwal clearly uh, has a lot to you know. Uh, uh, sort of say about these sort of things, and he has. It's all based on you know his uh, past experience and what he's done for the nation. So, so uh, just give it up uh, for Kanwal, please. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I also want to get to some questions quickly, Dr. Chintala. I know you often talk about integrated rural development, and uh, you know. Uh, by the way, Dr. Chintala has been working very closely <coughs> with an initiative that I'm involved with called the Kakatiya Sandbox that centered in Nizambad. A lot of that focused on the you know, farming communities and rural livelihoods. But go ahead, Dr. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, first of all, the, the rural entrepreneurship actually I can divide into two. One is with regard to the agriculture, the other one is with regard to the rural development. Agriculture, actually now that ultimately that rural areas, integrated rural development is the thing which we all should aim at. In India, we have 600,000 villages and close to 700 to 800 million people live. But at the same time, whatever work we do actually is done in silos. Actually, we never try to integrate. So actually that when I was uh, looking into it, actually we form, formulated policies for the integrated farming, integrated rural development, but at the same time, Quite a lot of things have to be done. Actually, now I can say, because after listening to that song, I say that uh, last one or two decades, actually, we started progressing so well. My belt, kal bhi hamara tha, aaj hamara hai, lekin aane wala kal, jo amrut kal hai, hamara sabka hai. Because quite a lot of things are happening. It's very, very exciting to be right now in this space. Now, in the integrated rural development, I would like to say that there are two or three things. One is, in a village, actually, you have farmers, you have farm workers, you have women. Actually, now this forgotten lot is that women are the rural areas. Close to around 40 to 50 percent of the population is belong to that one, who are in the most productive age, but at the same time not part of the economic growth which we are witnessing. So that is where that uh, uh, agree, that is uh, pulling up these women into self-help groups or maybe some kind of a thing and giving them the skills giving them the kind of a financial opportunities so that actually they can become part of this thing. Actually, that is where quite a lot of opportunities exist for the fintech uh, kind of a ventures where you can venture into the microfinance, you can venture into the skill-based kind of an enterprises which are very small but at the same time produces a plethora of goods. This is one part. So where the skill development is there. Now actually that I could say that some of the foundations like this Deshpande Foundation and others they are doing quite a lot of work in imparting that appropriate skill to the people and ultimately making them eligible for taking this kind of MSME loans, either from the NBFCs or from the banks. That is how the things will happen. So now I will say that a very big kind of a venture kind of a things are required to spot out such kind of a things and all this. And the next one in the rural development is the health care. Actually, this is one. Actually, my previous speaker was also mentioning about it. Now I could say because NABAD uh, as the big DFI, actually we give the loans to the state governments uh, at an ultra cheap rate uh, to create various structures including the primary health centers. Now having uh, taken the money and also created those things but at the same time 
So quite a lot of uh, people are left out uh, from getting the timely kind of a medical thing. Actually, now uh, uh, some startups are coming to fill this kind of a gap. I could see such kind of a things in various places, including UP, Andhra Pradesh, and everywhere. Now that is one area which probably the venture capitalists can look into it really how to scale it up. And the third most important thing is the agriculture. Now here in agriculture we have upstream, midstream and the downstream. Now actually that uh, I was uh, going through the whole of the literature because NABAD has an organization called NAB Ventures. Actually we are a second largest agri venture capital fund in the country after Omnivore. So, when we are looking into the whole of this data, actually there is a space in the, all these three segments that is, and right now, <coughs> last year, 2022 was a great year for the Indian agriculture uh, kind of a venture capitalists or maybe thinking. Close to around $4.5 billion have been invested in all these three segments of that upstream, midstream, and also the uh, downstream. Now that is where I feel that uh, a, quite a new things are happening in this one. So the integrated rural development is, encompassing technology, bringing the tech platforms for the aggregation, and also linking them with the downstream industries, like that uh, maybe the people who are into the final retailing and also supplying of the things. And at the same time, that en encouraging that upstream, that is the tech part, is the, these are the things which we should really be able to do it. I am very upbeat because having seen uh, my organization growing from 4,000 crores in 1982-83 balance sheet. In 40 years, we have reached $100 billion in the 40th year. So that itself is a thing where actually quite a lot of things are happening. People are taking the money, producing the things, <coughs> but at the same time, they require that final thing. Because finally, before just maybe winding up this particular topic, I will say that our agriculture exports right now around 30 to 40 billion dollars. But thing is, we should aim to go for a hundred billion dollars kind of an exports, as our gross value added of agriculture is close to 600 billion dollars. If that is the case, really, what exactly are the impediments? It is the place, that is the space actually where the startups have to do the traceability, QR code kind of a thing, blockchain technologies, putting IOTs giving the pesticide free and also natural farming kind of a things and bringing the integrated development because creating the water source through the farm ponds and at the same time creating the IOT to create the irrigation efficiency and producing the crops ultimately making the whole of this thing is a kind of a big supply chain which is reliable, resilient, toxic free and at the same time the customers abroad actually the diaspora is a very big one yeah. that they should be able to look forward for such kind of a products. That is where I think we should aim for that integrated rural development and a lot of ventures are required <coughs> to bring this kind of a development. All right. Th thank you, Dr. Chintala. So for all the tech entrepreneurs out there who are looking at the agri sector, you know, there's a uh, lot of uh, expertise here, uh, you know, with Dr. Chintala and uh, he's actually been making a lot of time for the entrepreneurs out there. So. Uh, I, n I don't know if we have time for a question or two, yeah, but yeah, before, I do, no, I, I do want to ask uh, a Kanwal one uh, question, maybe before I, you know, get to any uh, of the audience questions. Uh, so Kanwal, what is your dream for India? <laughs> you told me before uh, this trip, this may be my last trip that I can make, uh, yeah. given your so, age and so, everything else. So, so India became the fifth largest economy this year and it will slip what into becoming third largest economy in a few years. We'll have to do nothing you know, really heroic. Are we gonna be happy? Are we gonna be happy being third largest economy? Heck Are no. we gonna be happy being second largest economy? India, China, US. When the British started their march across India, we were the largest economy in the world. We were the number one economy in the world when the British started their march across India. Can we aspire to be number one again? Should we go for it? I, I believe that we should have lofty goals like that. We should lo have lofty goals like that and, and a policy framework to enable that. You know, when I sat with Amitabh Khan, a super bureaucrat now, he's highly thought of. He spent an hour with me trying to help him define a startup. I said, who cares? 
definition of startup. Let the entrepreneur decide if he do you know, something that's a startup. I say, well, we don't give them some policy transition. They don't need any policy transition. Just let them be. 300 page definition of a startup. You're not going to be a number one or number two. Many you have people, super bureaucrats like that. The policy transitions were so stupid. No tax, no income tax for five years. Startups don't make income. Startups don't make income. You know, so I, yeah, I tend to want to know, you know, <laughs> I, I think yeah, it's a time for us to think clearly, have a simple policy framework, let our people be, let our people take over and drive the process. I like the idea of having a VC fund for any time. Can we have a fund for certain third, fourth years in VC where, you know, you don't do, you know, you know what you need to do. But we must not prescribe, we must not plan that one of the biggest mistakes we ever made after the independence was planning commission. I, I want to give you, give you one, one uh, uh, Professor T. N. C. Nuvarshan, who was head of the economics department at Yale, was a young economist at Milan, uh, at, at Milan uh, late, I should use the word late, uh, T. N. Uh, uh. He, he told me a story. He said there was a debate at planning division. Should we produce, we should let our people produce consumer goods in India so our people could enjoy consumer goods? Or should we produce machines that produce, machi uh, that machines that produce consumer goods? Or should we prioritize machines that produce machines that produce consumer goods? So they prioritize the machines that produce machines that produce consumer goods. And when they started to produce those machines, there was zero market for them in India. Because there were no consumer goods. <laughs> you know, planning commission is thinking three generations ahead. No, nobody is smart enough. Nobody is smart enough to plan. We should let our entrepreneurs be. Let them see the problem on the ground. They think they can solve better than anybody else. Let's provide them the VC funding, angel funding. Yeah, in a competitive fashion for sure. I think we are the smartest people in the world. But we are the dumbest bureaucrats. I want to leave at that room. <laughs> Well, Kanwal has never been shy of speaking his mind, you know that, and yeah. Uh, but uh, truly remarkable, if you look, look back over the last uh, three decades, I can think of uh, many, I mean, there are a lot of patriotic Indians, obviously, but very, very few that had that kind of an impact, you know, at the scale that Kanwal has had, both in evangelizing entrepreneurship, which is really what TGS today is about, uh, and, uh, you know, also the DO, DOT policy that Kanwal talked about. Yeah, yeah, uh, I do want to make one point. The reason Thai survived 30 years and thriving now, it has become a people's movement. It has become Indian people's freedom movement, economic freedom movement. Nobody's driving this process. Nobody's driving this process. This process is being driven from bottoms up by various chapters and all that. You know, I, I get tried for uh, uh, doing it. I didn't do it. I came up with an idea. You guys did it. You know, so, you know, I think Indian people are ready. Let them be. Yeah, yeah. So, so if, if, if I may summarize uh, just quickly, I think what we are hearing is uh, the pathway to India becoming a number one economy in the world is through mass entrepreneurship. Unleash mass uh, you know, entrepreneurship at the scale of one, then going to 10 million by you know, time India turns 100. And the way to get there is to go beyond the metros, into the rural areas, nurture entrepreneurs in the rural areas, but also nurture support entrepreneurs that are addressing the problems and opportunities of rural India. Right, Kanwal, <coughs> Dr. Chintala? So I don't know if we have time for any one question. I know initially I thought we'll... So I, I think we should make five to seven minutes available for the audience to 
you would not. Yeah, that's yeah. A, so that's it, it'd be a shame. I'm checking with the organizers. Of course, sir. There's, there's a very interesting session going on. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please raise your Thank hands. You. The mic will reach you. We request uh, oh, yeah. the person with the mic to kindly hand over. Please, go ahead. One more hand here, yeah. So we'll take a couple of questions. Okay, uh, if you want to come here and... Yeah, yeah come on up, come on up. Yeah, but... Hello? Hello? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this question is for obviously the uh, Kaval sir. Actually, uh, I studied for five years in your Kaval Reki Institute of Technology in IIT Bombay Computer Science. So of course I am very obliged to you. But the question is that I have been the part of that quota factory or the IITJ coaching that that era, right? That where you slog for like two years and get into the IITs. So my question to you is. How much do you think it is important to, you know, go through that churning process, get into the IIT, which is like the, you know, the, the key era in India. Everybody wants to get their children in IIT, IIM. Or do you think that, you know, we can get into entrepreneurship? Because you typically encourage entrepreneurship, but even now in India, the parents want to get their children into IITs and IIMs. I mean, that's the ground reality. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, IITs and IIMs are overhyped. Indians are very smart people. Certain third, fourth year city universities are producing brilliant entrepreneurs. I know many entrepreneurs in the U.S. who didn't go to IIT, who didn't go to IAM. So I would not say IIT, I mean, I'm, I was lucky, I got into IIT and I did very, very well. But it's not necessary, it's not necessary to succeed in life. You know, we ought to give everybody a chance. Go, go ahead. Hi. This uh, <coughs> my question is... I, I, I guess there is an unambiguous answer there. You got, okay, go ahead. Yeah. I fully agree with uh, Kanwal and uh, Mr. Arun to create uh, 10 million entrepreneurs in uh, days to come. But do we have a model for that? We are targeting rural entrepreneur. I am rooted, grassrooted. I am working in the rural sector. So, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, so, I, I just want so, to me, know yeah, that I, I we have... A, India is not following any proven established model. Established model of development was start the low end manufacturing, shoes, toys, blah, 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 move up the thing. India is marching to its own tune. It developed this massive IT digital workforce at the top and became the world's IT digital supplier. That industry turned to become trillion dollars plus very quickly. These guys need to now focus on India and Bharat and come down. We are not going to follow anybody else's models. We let our people do their own way. When you start to say, well, nobody's done that way, let's see. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we, uh, India is marching to its own tune. But, yeah. sir, but sir, my uh, question is because a former chairman of NAVAD is also here. Do you have really, we are looking after the you know, entrepreneur in the rural sector. The real unemployment problem exists in the rural. We are talking of lessening the unemployment problem in the, and creating self-employment. But do we have established model to do that? Look after the agro agriculture, uh, you know, the rural youth, the agro allied sector, the handicraft sector, the we don't have an appropriate model. We just give some training and live out the... Yeah. Where, where are the banks? Yeah. They give loans yeah, to yeah, these people. We should establish a new planning commission to come up with the model. They don't, yeah. <laughs> no, no, okay, anyhow, that, this is not a forum to tell the whole of this thing that is happening. Yeah. But even to promote the rural entrepreneurs, now today we are having around 300 plus incubators in the country, incubation centers. They are from various people, uh, various organizations, including Nabad is having such kind of a thing. Now, you can go to any of those incubation centers, minimum 40 or 50 kind of <coughs> incubators, who got bright ideas, are not only getting that seed capital, and also sometimes they are getting the catalytic capital and they are doing something. So now, uh, uh, despair is not an answer to the whole of this thing. When somebody is having a bright idea, there is somebody to handhold it. People can go to those things and actually there are uh, quite a lot of uh, things are happening. Definitely we can uh, discuss it uh, maybe um, yeah. afterwards in the hall. 
yeah. absolutely quite a lot of things are there we will just have a discussion yeah Thank you. yeah i i i think you know yes. Hello. with all of this not everything has to be done by the government i think part of kanwal's message is government should not be involved in these things right so but go go ahead uh I guess this will be the last I question. I think we will take the last question. Last yes. question, Thank yes, you. it is. Yeah. Uh, Kanwal, I have been following you for almost twenty years, and I appreciate. I can't. Okay, we can't hear you. Uh, hello, hello. Oh, okay, I have been following you for almost twenty years now, and I I appreciate the way you are blunt always with your advices. But you know, good thing is that you just don't only criticize. You give advice, and you come to India every year and help. You know. so offlet this has become a trend people sitting abroad especially indians only criticizing india we have to appreciate india is growing if they are so concerned about things going wrong in india why don't they come forward advise what we should be doing and involve themselves and not just criticizing sitting there and never coming back to india okay uh, actually kanwal can i close that oh. i i don't want to engage you that's a stupid thing to be saying that is, that is absolute How did you get a tight arm policy in India? Who came up with that? No, no, I appreciate. I appreciate what you do. You involve yourself. No, you come so, here. So, so you, you every year you come here. You involve. You engage no, with us. But I'm there are people who just criticize sitting out there. Worry about you doing your bit. Your president Terry said, "Ask not <laughs> what your know, others. Yeah, you know, ask what you can do." and if you start to you know, worry about what others are saying you don't miss the boat everybody has to do their own bit in their own way let <laughs> others you know, do what they want to do i am not bothered by anybody i speak my mind i do my bit i strongly believe that one man can make a difference You know, and i've seen it happen i've seen it happen more than once professor ct parlot i mean he changed massive amount of things you know i i was very influenced by him as a as a as a kanwal you know, person i'm okay. getting it I, go I, ahead I yeah. yeah yeah so actually uh, on that note it's a perfect way to close uh, can i get that uh, last slide up please uh, just uh, i wanted to announce uh, you know a big commitment that kanwal actually has made to one of those initiatives that i'm personally involved with uh, called the kakatiya sandbox powered by the deshpande foundation so we are launching a central called crest and that's a 20 crore commitment by kanwal please give it up for kanwal and uh, so this is to promote entrepreneurship in rural india using north telangana as a gateway so this is a center that's coming up by the end of uh, the coming year just in 12 months and kanwal has done several things and dr chintala is also working with us very closely yes of course there are a lot of areas that need you know attention improvement but i think these are absolutely some of the brightest and the most caring minds within india so give it up for both our panel speakers here thank you